May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord continue to fill you with the desire for eternal things. I pray that the Lord will clothe all of you with strength from above. It is my prayer that he will give you power in the inner man. And may he favor you above your fellows. May your children possess the gates of their enemies as we serve together in the Lord's vineyard. Shall we turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 12? I'll read from verse 8 to 11. 1 Samuel chapter 12, from verse 8 to 11. First Samuel 12, 8 to 11. After Jacob entered Egypt, they cried to the Lord for help. And the Lord sent to Moses and Aaron, who brought your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, so he sold them into the hands of Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines and the king of Moab, who fought against them. They cried out to the Lord and said, We have sinned. We have forsaken the Lord and served the Baals and the Asherah. But now deliver us from the hands of the enemies and we will serve you. Verse 11. Then the Lord sent Jerubah, that is Gideon, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you so that you lived in safety. Now, the importance of this verse is this, that Samuel was about to depart the scene. In fact, he was giving his farewell speech when he had ordained for Israel a king. Then he started recounting the story of Israel. So far as leadership was his concern. And he spoke about the fact that when Israel was in Egypt, they cried to the Lord, and the Lord gave them Moses and Aaron. And then he went on to say that because of sin, they found themselves entangled again in exile and all these other places. And they cried to the Lord, repented and said, we will serve you. And the verse 11 says that, then the Lord sent Jerubah, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you so that you lived in safety. Now, pay attention to Levin again. Then the Lord sent Jerubah, or Gideon, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel. And he, the he there, is referring to God. And God delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you so that you lived in safety. Now, what Samuel is trying to say is this. From time to time, God gives his people leaders. But he remains the director and the sole leader. He still remains their leader. But in the natural, God brings men from time to time to lead his people. So he brought Moses and Aaron. And then later on, he gave them leaders. And then Samuel mentioned just a few. Now, Samuel was the one who was addressing them. But look at the way he put his name in context of leadership. Now, verse 11 again. Then the Lord sent Jerubah, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel. He didn't even say me. But he says, then the Lord sent. So he's just trying to tell the Israelites that his leadership was God sent. It's just God who gave somebody called Samuel to them, to lead them. Now, God chooses leaders for his people from time to time. And then when he chooses such people, he gives them a vision, a driving agenda, not closing your eyes and seeing angels, but a driving agenda. He gives them a vision 
And by and large, it is about what God wants to accomplish during the time and the period of that leader. You see, we are all deposits of God. And as we sit here, God has a lot of treasures in all of us. Now, depending on what he wants to do at any particular time, T, he picks the pe person in whom he has made that deposit so that the person can partner with him to lead his people. Now, and so I do not believe that the choice of leadership in the church since Machion has been the best of the people. If it, I say I don't believe, and I don't think so, yet because uh, of me. If you were to choose me from amongst you, then I know that it's not the best of the people. It's not the best. If the best of the people, I don't know the indices he uses, but I don't think that the best of the people because I am not the best of the people. Sometimes I foolishly even compare myself with the former chairman, and I realize that amongst all of them, I'm the least intelligent. You look at all of them. You just sit down and check all of them. And so for me to be chosen at such a time as this, it's not that God chooses the best of the people, but he chooses the one in whom he has made that deposit of which he wants to use at any particular time. And that person, that deposit is not going to be given to him on the day of his election. Now, whoever is going to be the next chairman, God knows. And he will be staring what he wants to do in the next phase of the church in this person's heart. And when the Bible says that when the time was fully come, and when the time is fully come, God just picks that person. Because he is going to travel on a road, and that person should know the road. Once that person is clear, God will pick that fellow. So that that fellow becomes the leader of the church. So he, together with God, and will just direct the people after God's heart and what God wants to do. When he's done with him, then he is finished. He places him aside and brings on another person. I believe that that is what God does from time to time. That is what he does. But this vision that he has placed in this man's heart is for the church. So if he keeps it, the church will not benefit from the vision, and God will be disappointed because it is for the entire church. So what I have done, or what the fellow is supposed to do, is to share the vision with the immediate supporters. So I've shared the vision the second time, the vision 2028, with the executive council. Now they ask a few questions, and then they make some inputs and all that. And then now, the executive council owns the vision. So the executive council called the heads all over the world. And when we met, the executive council shared the vision that God has given them to the heads of this church. And in this meeting, the heads of this church, together with the executive council, have called you together so that they will also share with you what they have received. And so it is very, very important that you open your spirit to receive what God has given the leaders, because we need you in the implementation of the vision. But you know that, aside us, the most important constituency of this church is the officership. And so when we receive the vision and we keep it here without passing it on to the officers, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. <laughs> the officers are very powerful. When I was somewhere as an area head, we were going to have an Easter convention and we were supposed to bring instruments from various districts, especially districts we know have very good instruments. And then we heard that this assembly just bought uh, some new instrument. And so we added them to the list. When it was time for them to go and fetch the instrument, the church house was securely locked. And the call to any of them, any of the leaders was out of coverage area. 
The presiding elder cannot be found. And when they told me this, I was, I was so, I said, so where is the presiding elder? You know what they did? They, they came for the evening convention, the first day, but they were standing at the back. Right after the convention, they left. So when I heard it, I issued a, a decree that bring this presiding elder back this time. Then go and look for him. Then they went and attacked this Dickin. And then Dickin uh, spilled the, the, the secret that they had a meeting and that they have decided that this year uh, instrument is not going anywhere. And then they've decided that the presiding elder should have the key and pretend as if he has traveled. That is how powerful presiding elders can be. Even though the instrument is not for him, the presiding elder is the gatekeeper to the local assembly. You see, especially when you work among people, you don't understand their language. After you have come to give the announcement, when the presiding elder comes and he changes the meter and says, don't mind him, they will not mind him. And so these are very important constituents, and they are more than us. When we are talking about the officership of the church, they are the real owners of the church. For us, we come and go, but they are there all the time. And so in February and March, it is incumbent on all of us to try and push this vision, pay your understanding, to the officership. And in that meeting, you, the pastor, will have the second chance of hearing the vision again. So that you, because you are the leader, when you hear it twice, now the area heads are hearing it for the second time. The executive members are hearing it for the third time. Because it is a vision. It's coming from somebody to you. Until it is repeated continuously, you may not grasp it. Not at all. In the vision 2023, after about a year getting to two years, I went somewhere and I was pushing. I was pushing the vision. And I heard behind me, Somebody that I thought should have known. The area head himself, ah, banana Matthias, I have now understood. That it's E, almost two years. And if the area head is saying that now that he has understood, what about the officership? But anyway, I didn't get discouraged because Paul says that the repetition is beneficial to the people. And so I kept repeating, repeating, repeating. But it has made this vision 2028 much more easier because it is premised on something that we have hammered for five years. And so we need to push this to the officership. But you know that the vision is for the whole church. It's not for the officership. Great as that constituency is, it is for the whole church. And until it reaches them, this vision cannot be effectively worked out. And so once you are here, don't uh, think of yourself, think of your 2,000 members. Think of them and all of them, how they will be able to grasp this so that we together will work with it. You see, a vision makes a man. It makes a people. A vision makes a people. A vision makes a man. A life without a vision is like a ship without a rudder. A life without a vision is like a ship without a rudder. Then sometimes if the church does not have a vision, everybody will do what seems right to the fellow and will not be able to have a coherent and co a cogent kind of punch because everybody is doing what he feels right. But the vision will make us... Where there is no vision, the people perish. That word means they lose on life. Life will be going on, but they will be lost within their life because they do not have a vision. Strong vision has a potential to make strong institutions. Vision has a potential to make strong institutions. But I'm saying that it has a potential it just cannot make it. Import, important as a vision is, though, a vision alone is not enough to change any society. The, we have so many visions of 
Every company has a vision. People even have their visions and uh, resolutions, but it is in a book. It doesn't change anything, important as it is. Its vision, if it has to change society, must be driven by strong commitment, determination, and passion. Strong commitment, determination, and passion. These three, commitment, determination, passion, is derived from understanding. Is derived from understanding. <laughs> the Bible says that the one you find gold or a jewel, something precious in a field, You cover it. Go and find money and buy the whole land. So when you are asking for, please loan me some money. So what are you going to do? Oh, you loan me some money. But the understanding the fellow has, because he knows that that money that he is going to loan, if he's able to succeed in buying the land, that there is something precious in the field that will be able to pay off the debt. He will go and look for money. And so where there is understanding, commitment is made easy. Where there is understanding, determination is made easy. And when there is understanding, passion, passion, fire coming out of the bones is made easy. So vision alone will not change our church. We need some commitment from all of us, a want to do. And then a determination to do that. A commitment, a want to do, and determination are two different things. Sometimes you want to do, but there will be obstacles. But the determination will run over the obstacles. And then when you want to do it, the passion, the passion that you have will cause a success. And it will make it much more attractive when somebody has passion, is able to achieve things that easy. Having said this, brothers and sisters, I will attempt to give you the background of this vision. We shall spend two days going into the vision. Not all of them, because two days is not that enough. But at least some of the new interventions, we try and open them up. When, let's say, we call Home and Urban Vision, Home and Urban Mission, Ham Coordinator to come and speak uh, to certain issues on Ham, we want him to talk about the fresh things we are bringing on board not what we all know already. And so that is what we'll be trying to do. And so in this few minutes that I have, I'll throw some light on the vision, giving the background, the foundation of this vision. Please open your spirits and then listen to us. Now, because we are learning, reading from the book is okay, so that you'll be able to make notes as you move on. So that if the person doesn't talk Pentecostally, Hallelujah. Amen. And John, don't think that there's no anointing. Yeah. Jonathan Edwards is arguably the greatest preacher that the U.S. has ever had. But his, he had challenge with his, he read his, his scripts. And then as for John Wesley, they said that he was, he was not that exciting. And he was also a diminutive figure. And any time that you see a movement, it was when he was turning a page. Yeah. But he was so much loaded that every word that came out of his mouth is something that you want to pay attention to. Listen, where there is great anointing, there's not so much noise all the time. Now test this. Any time that you say hallelujah, see, when the anointing is that great, there's some kind of death silence that falls on the congregation. And when even a pin drops, you will hear. So let us balance it. It's not always about noise. It is about the breath of God behind what you are hearing. Shall we rise for a moment? I want you to pray for yourself. That God, I have a responsibility to take this to my members, open my heart, open my mind, 
Deposit something in me. Grant me some determination and commitment. Help me to push this to the right place. That the whole church would be unleashed. Shall we pray for a moment? Spirit of the living God. Hello, my Sunday. Kibari and the red 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 Amen. Please, you may resume your seat. And so let's go into our books. Page, page five. Right here is page five. Page five. The theme for Vision 2028 is possessing the nations. The theme for Vision 2023 was possessing the nations. So we have not changed the theme. This one, because it is also possessing the nations, we are saying that it is phase two of the possessing the nations agenda. So the theme for Vision 2028 is possessing the nations, unleashing the whole church to transform their world with values and principles of the kingdom of God. This vision is a direct follow-up of the vision 2023, which spanned 2018 to 2023. In the context of the theme, the term unleashing means getting members out of the fortress of the church into their sphere of influence and transform them. Now, Jesus Christ entered into a temple without boundary. The temple that Jesus rose and entered into, the Bible says that it is without boundary. It is us who build churches with walls. Otherwise, the New Testament church has not got any boundary. So don't say that this is church, this is work. No. Wherever you are, you form the temple, you are a priest, and you are a sacrifice. So wherever two or three are gathered in his name, whether anywhere or whatever, you are in the church. So when we talk about the church, we are talking about the called out ones. So when we are unleashed and we are in the church, it is still the church. So the church is not stuck to uh, any four walls. So that is the church. Have this understanding when we are talking about church. And so in this particular vision, the term unleash means getting members out of the fortress of the church into their sphere of influence and transform them, transform the, in the spheres. The word transformation in this vision is also used here to describe the conversion of souls, human beings, and then the conversion of society through the gospel, changing society through the kingdom principles and lifestyle, changing society. Now, the slogan for this vision 2028 is this. Possessing the nations... Then we will respond, I am an agent of transformation. This was used in the vision 2023. So we have introduced a second one. To just bring a difference between the two. So this one, the second slogan is possessing the nations. And then we respond, transforming my world. Transforming my world. When we say your world, it begins in your home yourself and your spouse, your children, and your spheres, your world, your world. So I want to um, take the slogan again. Possessing the nations, I am an agent of transformation. Possessing the nations, transforming my world. 
transforming my world. So let us try. So that after we have said our normal praise the Lord, let us remember the slogan too. Slogans are war cries. It's a gathering's cry. So when you, you say, Choboy, and the people say, hey, what is, we, we are trying to gather the people together. And so we are bringing our minds to the task that we have. So just uh, pushing out the slogan there is also very important. The possessing the nation's agenda is strictly in line with the main mission of the Church of Pentecost. We exist to establish responsible and self-sustaining churches filled with committed, spirit-filled Christians of character who will impact their communities. Now, why is this important? Because this is the overarching mission of the Church of Pentecost. And if a vision does not tally with this, it cannot be accepted. Because this is COP. So if any leader says that I have a vision, and he tells the vision, and it is outside this, the executive council cannot accept that vision. That is how important it is. We always have to check the vision we have with the overarching vision and the mission of the church. The church as the body of Christ is an elected group with a unique mandate to carry the gospel to the ends of the earth. The mandate is given to the church as a corporate entity and not individual members. It must, however, be emphasized that the church comprises individual members who collectively form this corporate entity. Have I communicated? Yeah. Thus, the whole is mandated to embark on the church's mission to the world. In other words, in approaching its mission, the church should think corporately as a community and mobilize all its resources, including the clergy, the laity, the children. Everyone in the church is mandated to go out and push the Great Commission. Believers are therefore not to see themselves as individuals only, but as essential members of a body called the church. Let's teach this. So that as people come to church, they should see that they are part of a body called the church. While Vision 2023, the phase one of the Possessing the Nation's agenda, focus on equipping our members, Vision 2028, the phase two, will focus on unleashing these equipped members into the world as agents of what? Transformation. The ultimate goal is to fulfill the Great Commission by reaching individuals for more works of life and elevating the values and principles of the kingdom of God in every sphere of society. In the church unleash, an individual's primary ministry may be within one of many traditional church programs or in-house activity, like maybe he's a Bible study leader, he sings in the choir, fine. However, there is an equal chance that his or her ministry may also be in the prisons or in the hospitals, or in either case, the norm is people-centered ministry. So we are saying that when we are talking about the church unleashed, we are still concerned about the local church. You can be a Bible study leader, but you can still have a ministry in the prisons. That is what we are talking about. And so the church unleashed is not unconcerned about what goes on in the building. The local church will continue to serve as an equipping and nurturing center where Christ-like disciples will be raised for the unleashing agenda. The Christ-like is so important. So we have a talk on the Christ-like disciple. Now, it is only Christ that transforms nations. And so once we raise Christ-like disciples, we'll be able to follow Christ's example. And so let us pay attention to raising such people. This strategy document that you have in your hands presents the details of what we seek to achieve 
through Vision 2028 with a detailed outline of implementation strategy spelled out on that carefully selected thematic areas, each of the 41 thematic areas designed for the vision has specific objective, objectives to guide the implementation strategy. The Vision 2028 Agenda recognizes that the Church of Pentecost is a global church that operates in 150 nations as of December 2022. While this strategy document serves as a guide for the church's activities over the next five years, it is impracticable to include specific interventions that are relevant and appropriate for every context. It is not practical. Therefore, it is essential to note that some plan interventions may be more applicable to the mother church in Ghana than in other nations. However, our external branches, brothers and sisters, should be guided by the spirit of the vision and develop specific interventions within their context that align with the church's goal of unleashing the whole church to transform their world with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. And so while some of the examples uh, that we'll give will be Ghana-specific, please, those of you outside, try and contextualize it. Put it in your context. The overall goal of the Vision 2028. Vision 2028 shall keep to the overall goal set for the Possessing the Nations agenda. A church where members go to possess their nations by transforming every worldview, thoughts, and behaviors with values, principles, and lifestyle of the kingdom of God, and thereby turning many people to Christ. This has been the overall goal of the Possessing the Nations. Now, so it was the overall goal for Vision 2023, and because we have not changed the Possessing the Nations agenda, it is still the overall goal. By pursuing Vision 2028, leveraging on what has already been achieved in the last five years, we foresee a church actively conscious of its role as salt and light in the world, a church where each member identifies himself or herself as a disciple and a witness of Christ, taxed with a ministry outside the walls of the church. When I'm talking about ministry, I'm talking about service. The word ministry is service. So I'm not saying that go and start your church, but we are saying that ministry outside the walls of the COP, that you have to do some service to service to the society by way of, of impacting your sphere with your salt and light. That is what we mean by ministry in this context. This understanding underscored the fact that while Vision 2023 focused on equipping the church, Vision 2028 will focus on unleashing the church into the society to possess it. Every member will therefore be encouraged to have a ministry outside the church. I think I've explained that. That is, they are be, they becoming channels through which God's grace will flow to the outside world. So every member should become a channel through which God will let his grace flow to reach the unrich. In pursuit of this, the chaplaincy ministry and the workers' guild are expected to play a prominent role in realizing the objective of the Vision 2028 agenda and bringing many to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The goal of Vision 2028 agenda, therefore, implies that evangelism and mission, missions work will not be limited to any specific department of the church, but will rather be the DNA that runs through every fiber of the church. In this regard, every member, every ministry, every local assembly will be a channel through which God's grace reaches others, 
both the letter and the spirit of Vision 2028 and joins every church member to embrace their jobs, their schools, their families, their communities, and wherever God has planted them as their mission field. Have I communicated now as their mission field? Per Vision 2028, ministry shall therefore be defined as whatever one does. Now, so I'm defining the ministry now. Whatever one does, I think if you have, just note that one. So that when you go out there, you define what we mean by ministry well. Per Vision 2028, ministry shall therefore be defined as whatever one does to bring, shall we read together? Let's read. Uh, lift up your, your, your heads, O ye, O ye men and women. Yeah, so let's read together. Ready, go. Per Vision 2028, ministry shall be defined as whatever one does to bring their sphere of influence subject to the principles of the kingdom of God. Whatever you are going to do to bring your sphere of influence subject to to the kingdom principles is what we mean by vision. So let's continue. We shall by this be proactive in raising members for the church and the state. So we are now raising members for the church. We are teaching them to pray. We are teaching them to read their Bible. We want them to be strong, but we are not just raising them for the church. We are raising them for the state as well. So be interested in their academic work, in their schooling, their work life, and how they will be able to impact the society. That is Christianity. It's not just about the church. The church is to equip men for the works of service. So we are raising young people now. Try as pastors and wives, raise your children, not only to be apostles, but raise them to be apostles of the society as well. Let us raise presidents and ministers. Let's have that consciousness. Because it is only the church that is the hope for the manifestation of the glory of God. As earlier defined, the word transformation refers to the conversion of souls and society through the gospel. The gospel entails the salvation message and the values and principles of the kingdom that transforms society. This one, I want you to put it in your spirit. The gospel entails the salvation message and the values and principles of the kingdom that transforms society. That is the gospel. That is how powerful it is. If the gospel transforms the society, not just individuals, then we cannot afford not to enter into the society. Let's get in there with the gospel. It will change the society. The gospel must therefore be taken into every area of society so that persons and cultures are truly transformed by divine grace. By divine grace. Now, what is the gap analysis? When we are talking about the gap analysis, we are saying that we want to possess nations. What have we done? What we have done is the five years we have equipped members. So we have equipped members, but we want to possess nations. So this second vision is like filling the gap. Now, just uh, equipping members and then your target is to possess nations, how would they achieve it unless they are unleashed to go out there and possess the nations? Have I communicated? And so that will be the filling the gap. That will be the filling the gap. Now, in the past five years, we have focused on equipping the church to possess the nations. However, equipping people does not generate guarantee that they will take necessary action in their communities to possess the world for, for Jesus Christ. It requires a systematic effort to strategically unleash the vast potential currently held within the church. A church equipped must be unleashed to transform the world. What did you hear? A church equipped must be unleashed to transform the world. The Church of Pentecost, as a local church, has such a, a committed lay leadership, but that is not big enough. It is not big enough to achieve the objective of unleashing the whole church. Our officers are committed, but our officers are not the whole church. 
it is not big enough to reach a generation that has waning interest in church. Now the officers will be in church and it is when you come to church before these officers can contact you. But these days, people don't have interest in church. So if all our ministry is in church, we will not reach them. And so we want to reach the unrich. And so we need to mobilize the whole church and carefully unleash them to touch the world. Are we together? Fine. There are church members who have strong desire to use their relationship with God, leadership abilities, talents, gifts, and life's experience to reach the kingdom of God. Do you believe that there are members like that? Yes. However, the experience has been that only a few ministers and leaders share in this hunger for ministry, in, share in this hunger for ministry, and thus provide opportunities for them to become ministers outside the church. There are equally others who want to do something for the kingdom of God in their sphere of influence, but are held back by fear arising from the world's intimidation. Is that one too true? Yes. Yes, the world can be very, very intimidating. So what Vision 2028 seeks to do is to create avenues and opportunities for ministry outside the walls of the church while unleashing our members from whatever fear or hindrance that could prevent them from engaging with and transforming their world. So that is what the vision seeks to do. While numerical growth is essential in unleashing the church, it is not the central thing. When we are talking about unleashing the church, that the church should go, that the church should leave the fortress of the church, numerical growth, uh, we are 25, we are 30, we are 2,000, it's not the central thing. We are not saying that it is not important. But it's not the central theme. What then is the philosophy behind the unleashing? The central theme is a certain philosophy of church ministry. The kind of church ministry that devised means to build major ministries extending across nations. Ministries not typically found in the local church. Where members are raised to be channels through whom the grace of God who flow to bless humanity. That is when we can say the church has been unleashed. By this, we shall see the kingdom of God flowing from the church into streets, into homes, and into the workplace. And now it will interest you to know that in this vision, we have captured a ministry. And we are encouraging you to open your eyes and uh, look at your society and design ministry that will meet their needs and bring people to Christ. One of the new interventions is ministry to celebrities. Yeah. Ministry to celebrities. Just last week, I had an encounter with one of the rich people in the country. He is not a member of the church. Very, very rich, fabulously rich. And whilst we were discussing, I know where he lives. And I know that the rich young people that live within that community, they have a fraternity. And then I was mentioning this to him, that we want to reach these people. Then I mentioned one of their names, he didn't say anything. I mentioned the other, he didn't say anything. And then later on he said, also, these people, not that they don't love God, but one of them was telling me that what he doesn't want is to go to church and disappoint God. And so because he knows he's doing certain things, he will not go to church at all. And then this man tells me that he is part of those group. So, <laughs> Monkeys, they walk by sizes. You see, this man is very rich. He's a Christian. A good one, of course. But those rich guys, not knowing that he is part of their group, because monkeys walk by size. 
You see, when you see a rich man, and you are also rich, they speak a certain language. Those of us here, we don't know, because we are not in that category. For them, <laughs> when uh, we had this, when we have this something happening, let me not say it. This man will come to me and then he, he has his different analysis from what the government is saying. And then his heart is in his analysis. Because for me, I was also interested because I have some money with the government. But not anywhere close to what this man has. And then he has his analysis. One day he came to my office and he saw one of our elders who also deals with money. Then he said, hey, my friend, you are here. When he left, he said, oh, we so come on, sorry. Some, these people, hmm. And then he, he was not saying that the elder is a bad man. But these people, the people who take our money. <laughs> you see, for they, they, they deal with money. And they speak a certain language. Now, once I was listening to him, I realized that it is all because we don't get close to these people. That is why this man has a philosophy that he doesn't want to disappoint God. And then this man tells me that every Christmas day, these people organize church service. And then they will invite a pastor to come and preach to them. Only that they are not repenting as we, we, we want them to repent. And so if we leave them and we think that they cannot change, the devil will take hold of them. Yeah. These days, a lot of them have joined all courts. But brothers, do we have to sit down for them to join all courts? Now, you see them in their flashy cars, but the problems they have, the problems they have, the problems they have. I always talk about Bob Mali. Bob Mali was changing the whole world. And he was even changing the church. It was during Bob Marley's time that the reggae music started entering the church. I was then a young man at a certain district. Some young men were dancing, and then our pastor took the bell, those days the big bell, and then he rang it, crying, crying, sit down. Now he was just frustrated with the, the jump. It was those times that this young man caused tattered jeans, dreadlocks. It was, he, he was a religious leader. He died at age 36. Very young. At that time, he was one of the richest in the world and arguably the most famous people on earth. And he had a lot of friends, but his money, and his fame did not save him. But I wonder what, what does some Christian actually preach the gospel to Bob Marley? We shine away from them. But these ones, if we are to bring somebody like Amachi Dede into the church of Pentecost, the next day, he will lead chorus. Because we are not, we are not going to take him to audition. Is that what you do? Do re mi fa so? Who, how many of you is going to teach Amachi Dede do re mi fa so? No. He, the next day, he will lead the chorus. Do, do you get what I, what I mean? The next day, he will lead the chorus. So we are going to have ministries for all these kinds of people. That is what we mean by the Vision 2028. <laughs> and so we have strategic objectives. When we talk about strategic objectives, we are talking about specific time-bound measurable steps to reach the overall goal. The overall goal is still possessing the nations. And now we want to unleash. So we want to have specific measurable steps. So when you read, you realize that we have about 16 of them, specific measurable steps that we want to take. Now, if you want to possess nations, you must also bring on some strength. Now, the strength that we have is how we have been able to achieve something small from the vision 2023. And then the strength the Church of Pentecost also has is our numbers. Is our numbers. One of the strengths that we also have, that these days, even in Ghanaian Christianity, 
You cannot mention one, two, three churches without mentioning the church of Pentecost. Without. Sometimes people just call you pleading that you add a voice to a certain statement to make it count. To make it count. We had to go out from the executive meeting to go and write something on moral vision. And yesterday, it was on the front page at the corner. I was called to that I should put something on the moral vision. And then I had to write it. And so the reason why they are calling on me is because of the Church of Pentecost and what we have done and they have known. And so God has given us some leverage and we have to take advantage of that. Even in global Christianity, the Church of Pentecost is known. And so we are bringing on strength. But beyond all this, what is our greatest strength is the grace of God and the Lord who is with us. So I believe that if all of us decide that we will transform nations, we will transform nation. We will transform nation. Then, apart from the grace of God, when I was in South Africa, I came back home one day, and it was uh, Madame Trish who was at the, at the mission's office then. She asked me, uh, Pastor Eric, how is South Africa? Then I said, by the grace of God. He said, what does the grace of God mean? Explain. She, she wanted me to, to list what the grace of God is doing. At least my members are growing. We have done that. We have done that. So we know that God is with us. The grace of God is with us. Yet we need to have strategic approach. Strategic approach. Strategic approach means how do we move towards achieving our objectives? And so we have, we shall do this, we shall do this, we shall do this as our objectives. And we are saying that we have strength, but we must map the how to get to our objective. Have I communicated? So that is what we mean by strategic approach. And we have four prone strategic approach. Four prone strategic approach. Now the first one is strengthening the local church as a discipleship and unleashing center. So the local church will continue to be a discipleship and what? Unleashing center. So in this vision, we will major strongly on discipleship. Even though we are moving on, we want to raise them and release them. The second strategic approach is unleashing the tremendous potential of the church into the society to possess it. The COP has such a tremendous potential. And now even among the pastorate, now we have rich guys, people who can take this church much more uh, forward than we have done in the past. Very intelligent young people who have joined our fraternity. When you travel abroad, the kind of people we have is great. Someone was interviewing me the other time, and he says that, why do, we have, do you have all the millionaires in this nation in your church? So, is that it? I didn't know that we had all the millionaires in this church. And then he himself went ahead and mentioned some of them. So, oh, yes, 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 yes. But you see, we, we go out and we say, God, Oje here for, Oje here for. And then we equip them. And then we raise them through the gospel to become what they have become. So, is that it? So should I come to your church? Can you turn me into a millionaire? Say, so come tomorrow. I will turn you into a millionaire. And so that is that there is a great potential in this church. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about wisdom, riches. Now go to the investors. There is no single student group that is bigger than Pensa. There is no single. This one I shouldn't say arguably. Even every vice chancellor is away. And now they will give us land. We will try and build huge structure. And then after we have finished building it, the students, it cannot contain them. Now we have finished one at KNUST and we are struggling. We are, we, that is how God has blessed us. Every year, we, we, these students are released into the society. Fancy that if they understand this unleashing and the possessing the nation's agenda, none of them will go and top up any corruption in their sphere. And the wonderful thing about this Vision 2028 intervention is that the, the Workers Guild, 
the youth ha- have a version in the schools now. And so in the schools, we will start training them. So when you come to school, they will be doing Bible study. Engineers will meet. Architects will also meet. And then from there, they train themselves as to how to go out there and change their spheres. This Ghana and this world can be transformed. With just the principles of the kingdom of God, we will be able to do that. So then the third approach is harnessing our social ministry for societal transformation. And so our social ministry, our touch to the community, and now when we started with the prisons, building prisons, people were laughing at us. But go to Nigeria, the number of people who have gotten saved from Nigeria, and all of us will die, and this prison will still be saving souls and transforming life. Now Ghanaians have come to understand that churches are not just supposed to build clinics and schools. They saw that with the white man, but the black man has taught them that we can also build prisons. Yeah. We can also build prisons and we'll save life. You see, it is only by doing that that the kings and the queens have come close to the Church of Pentecost. Yeah. Otherwise, our prayer in our church house does not mean anything to them. Let them see Jesus walk in their community. You go there and repair and then just do something small for the palace. The king will give you land for free. Then D, strengthening and realigning our church systems, structures, and institutions to drive the Vision 2028 agenda. Now listen, the church stretches every week, women's movement. And then when we touched it, it was like, no, we make only every week. Now these are church stretches. Every vision that any chairman comes, you should allow him to reorganize the stretches, to push the vision. So these stretches are not static. It was put there by men. And then we need to reorganize it to push an agenda. Are we together? And so this vision 2028 will also touch the stretches. One of the wonderful things that we are going to do is that we are going to have an e-church. E-church means that we are going to have a pastor, a presiding elder, a place where we shall fill them with serious gadgets, and then we will be ministering to people in the virtual space. The virtual space. Now it should be, it's going to be missiological in approach. There are places that we can never go. You cannot, uh, one of our pastors is in a certain nation. Since we sent him there, he is still in the house. And then he's just struggling virtually to meet the people. He tells me the terrain is tough because the people, there are governmental structures against Christianity. Now, should we sit down for these things to happen? No. We need to build the strategy. So we are going to have a pastor who is sharp. When when I mean sharp, I mean sharp. (laughs) Sharp. And then we are going to pull our musicians like Dinah, Hamilton, and the rest. Very good singers. They'll be part of that assembly. So the assembly and the assembly members will be global, but not many. You, you are not among. Yes. <laughs> you and your member, we shall not accept you. And then these people will be preaching to the global space. You know where I got this? The young man whispered to my ears, but I got the understanding when Naaman went to Elisha. And then he said, can I take some earth from here? Because I'm never going to worship these gods in Damascus any longer. I'll worship the God of Israel. Then he made a request. (laughs) Kumi <laughs> Lavi has a red face, so come, 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 come. Yeah. So, Naaman says that, per my position, I will go to the shrine with my boss. And my boss will have to lean on my arms. So, if my boss bows down to the God, I will also have to bow down. But if I bow down, please pardon me. I'm only bowing down, but I've changed. 
So I'll go there with my boss. He bows down. If I don't bow down, I may lose my job. So I also bow down. We are going to have a certain group of people who will still go to the mocks and sit and do this, but they are Christians. That is how we are going to change the world. And we are going to do it through the virtual space. And I want all of us to come on board. You see, the second prophecy says that uh, what God is going to do, it has never come into our minds ever. Can we imagine if you unleash all our members and everybody is committed to the cause of the gospel? And the first prophecy says that this army, there should be no anything like what? Reluctancy, idleness, and insubordination. Let us go out there and let's see what God can do. Shall we rise to our feet as I invite Apostle J. Kwati to come? Shall we reflect on the message? Just keep standing, but close your eyes and then reflect on the message. In the first place, I want us to thank God for his magnanimity for giving us such an enormous and extensive vision. Any institution, church, nation without vision will perish. But God has been kind to us He has been good to us. The love that he has lavished on the church for raising us leaders that we hear directly from him. Shall we thank him for this vision in the first place? Shall we love the Lord with your voice? Say something. Tell God something. Worship him. Give him praise. Like Hosea said, he said, take some words with you and go to God. Go to God with words and love him. Offer to him free will offering of your lips. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name. We want to give you praise. We want to honor you, God, for this vision, for this direction. We bless you. We bless you, O God. We bless you, O God. We give you praise. We honor you. La basanda la bakatanda. We worship you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bow before you, Lord. We prostrate before you, Lord. For your kindness to your church, your goodness to your people. We bless your name. Be honored, Nabaso, Kibondo, Priyande, Kaso. Father, we give you praise. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. La Sadaha, Yabasadaha. Oh, the Brondi Picatandi, Satan, the Libro Cotondo, the Bissanda Labatanda, the Bricotondo, the Bro Satan, the Libro, Payanda. Father, we bless your name. We give you praise. We give you praise. Shadi Asetan, the Libro Patande, Labatondo, the Labasanda. And declare your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Rosabeth Moss Kanta said this about vision. He said, a vision is not just a picture of what could be, but an appeal to our better selves 
a call to become something more. I want to repeat. Elizabeth Moss Kanta said this. A vision is not just a picture of what could be, but an appeal to our better selves. A call to become something more. And what more? To be transformers and possessors of nations. And this cannot be done without prayer. Prayer will be the engine for the vision 2028. It will give the strategic approach bite and life. Because without prayer, the Bible says that the letter kills. It is the spirit that gives life. Chairman said, with understanding, it will engender commitment, passion, and determination. But beside understanding, it is prayer that is going to extract and exact the passion and the commitment and the determination that we need to see Vision 2028 to, to have a performance and implementation. Shall we then now begin to lift our voices to our God and cry to our God. Cry to our God so that the wheels of the vision will begin to run. Shall we begin to pray? Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot do without prayer and the value of prayer none can measure. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you turn the wheels of this vision Vision 2028, we want to see a performance, we want to see implementation, we want to see the success of this vision. We pray, oh God, turn the wheels of the vision, turn the engines of the vision, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is the spirit of God that will give life to the strategy that we have, the strategy that we are mapping up, it is by by prayer, it is by your spirit. Lo kabo si katanda biya, ye kasondo briande pakando, ti pahandi ya kiri bosande, kadi anda pikete chapo sakandi, briye de bokotondo brianda, kabete de brianda siko, leko bokotondo pandi ya tipe, si ya kadi botapi ene kasondo. Father, we pray the fierce will of God to drive this vision in the mighty name of Jesus, the driving force of God, your spirit and your power. Father, we pray to extract determination, to extract passion, to extract determination and commitment in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. La casua di pecha sotto, pa cadia pirie de cosotto, di pa caie, la pa cadia de pesete, pa cadia pite sua, di bele de basso, camutende, le cambata di pariata, di lotto casotto, we pray for grace, we pray for grace, we pray for grace, we pray for grace, we pray for greater grace. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, the consolo pacania tirianda, the catona brianda, we pray, oh God, that you stretch forth your hand to drag this vision. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, let your people be willing in the day of your power. Shaka saka kadaba, pacania tiribosata, let your people be willing. Let your people have the desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, stay the hearts of your people. Stay the hearts of your people. And stay the feet of your people. Let this vision see a performance. Let this vision see a performance. Let there be a repetition. 
implementation and performance in the mighty name of Jesus. Loco Sotia Pande, Shama Katon de Priende, Sabato di Pondo, Priya de Pacanda, Yapani Epania Sopoto Picanda, Yepani Opiriende, Pray, Pahina we pray for grace. We pray for grace. We pray for grace. Lashia de Catanda, the Kondo Sabata, Pikende Payanda, Aye Yamatende, Pandoria Piriata Sikende. Oh, Kaso, Ibatanda, Ibando, Ibanda, Ibatanda. We pray for grace, great, great, great grace upon our strategies and our plans. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, drive this vision across the nation. Let fierce win, oh God, drive this vision across the nation. In the name of Jesus, Fire Sakada Hata, Papanda. La Bocotoni e Padi e Sakaye, Shaba di Piriana, Koto Botipende Cadiente, Yapani Catondo, Brianda, Aye, Aye, Cabasanta, Pacando, Briende, Taboni Kitabatende, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, Move, Move our hearts, Move our minds, Move our hearts. Move our feet in the name of Jesus. Pakadi Pekadi, Sabadi Pandate, Pahadi Akiri Botondo, Priya Bibi Katanda, Ayai Kado Siti Tanda, Pray Pahadi Akanda, Labadi Pakado, Sipedi Akiri Pete, Pakadi Kaya Kado, Priya Kado, Priya Tapaye Di Oso. I Let there be a stirring. Let there be a stirring. Let there be willingness. Let there be a performance. Let there be a performance. Let there be action. Father God, we pray to your people. Fill your people with zeal and a desire to go, a desire to do. In the name of Jesus. Let me interrupt for some few seconds. I want to read Psalm 78, verse 9. In spite of all that chairman has said, we need willingness. We need willingness. Let's look at what happened to the tribe of Ephraim. He said, The men of Ephraim. So armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by the law. They forgot what God has done, the wonders he has shown them. In spite of all that we have heard, we need willingness. Something to take us away from the leash so that we will be unleashed. We are praying for willingness. And after the prayer, I invite Pastor Samuel Siyama to conclude the prayer for me. Shall we begin to pray for willingness that we will be unleashed. I will be taking off any kind of leash. Anything that binds us that God should lose the church. God should lose the church. Let every wall fall so that we will go out in the name of Jesus. That we will not be like the tribe of Ephraim in spite of the fact that they were armed. They refused to fight. They refused to go to war. They turned back. They turned their backs against the battle even though they were armed to the teeth. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. 
that we will be unleashed, that we will be prepared to go. Le Shakando, Riende Sakamuta Bendi, Kipele Sakwandi Bakando, Kiperianda, willingness, willingness, the desire to go, the desire to go. Shabakati Epe Katini, Riende Kodono, that we will not be held by the every man, that we will not turn our backs against the war, against the battle. We will not turn our backs on the day of battle. We will keep the covenant that we will walk and run with the vision in the name of Jesus. Father, make our hearts malleable. Make our hearts malleable in the name of Jesus. By your Sakanda, Triando Petende, help us to turn our next of all to the Lord. Help us to carry the Lord of this vision in the name of Jesus. Now, the Siamma is going to pray, but open your eyes. There was this verse that the Lord gave me uh, when we met at the head session, and I want us to read, and then I will humbly request that we all uh, back this vision with prayer. You see, the unleashing agenda, unless the Lord himself pushes the people out of their fortress, they will not even go. Yeah. So we need the help of God. So I will just bring this quotation again so that we all grasp it. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce wind. Because ships are great, they are big. The winds that drive them are fierce. This is a huge vision. We need fierce wind. That kind of wind that parted the rest into two. May the Lord grant us grace to push this vision, this big ship, into the world. May the Lord himself push us out of the fortress. We are saying the fortress of the church. So if he, God himself does not do it, nothing will happen. He had to cause that to happen on the day of Pentecost and beyond. Otherwise, they were stuck in Jerusalem. Not wind of persecution. By the wind of grace, great grace, shall we lift up our hands if we can.